Okay, in the last video, which was the first part of this section on visualizing things with Pygame, we did the following. We um, imported Pygame into random module. We'll define a couple of global variables, and then we created two functions. One was to draw a single rectangle onto the screen, and this function was called draw bar. It takes an array, it then takes one one index i of one particular element within this array, and then a screen, which was this window that we created in Pygame. And then we also have to input a color for this bar to be drawn onto the screen. And then this function would draw this particular bar. And then down here, we would have what you can think of as a wrapper around this function. It was called draw bars, and we only used the array and then the screen that we are drawing on. And then it said screen.fill. We made everything black in the background to make sure that the different bar charts were not drawn on top of each other. Otherwise, they would just like blend together. And then we just looped through the entire array and then used um, this function over and over again for every single bar of the array to be drawn. And down here, we initialized our pie game and then we create the screen, the window. And down here, we had our very simple animation loop. We created an array at each iteration of the loop. So we were just reshuffling things. Then we used our function from above. We updated the screen. We paused the animation for a brief moment. Otherwise, it would just be too quickly. And down here, we were giving the user the ability to close the animation window and then terminate the execution of the code. Now it's time to actually introduce our sorting algorithm into this animation here. And we'll be doing this by taking this create array thing, which was just creating creating new arrays constantly with each pass of the loop. And we'll move this up here. Um, gonna unindent this. And we'll say create array and sorting process generator. Now to create the generator, we'll have to import one of the sorting algorithms. So I'm just gonna be using cocktail sort because this was the most recent algorithm that we worked with. So from cocktail, we are going to import cocktail sort. Make sure that you have all of these different files. I think you should know this by now, but I'm just making sure here, always in the same folder, otherwise you can't import from the other scripts. So from cocktail, import cocktail sort. Now we can define um, the generator object, I'm just gonna call this process. And this will now cocktail sort of our array here. And now down here, we'll have to access the um, next step in the sorting process, okay? So now we'll say array is equal to, well, actually the array, and then remember how we had all the different highlights. Highlight to highlight three is equal to next of the process. And now we'll also have to define our alternative for turn statement in case um, the generator has reached the last step of the sorting process. And then it will just be returning this tuple here with four times none. So the first number will be this array and then the other nuns will be assigned to the different highlights. And now we'll um, Visualize the array using a bar chart. Okay, so yeah, let's see whether that works. I'm gonna run this and there we have it. Um, what just happened here, after the animation finished, we got an error message. Well, so what happens is that once we actually reach the none statement here and the array is now none, the draw bars function cannot draw anymore, okay? But let's just slow down the um, the animation for a moment here. I'm gonna increase this to 10, but we can see that the animation is actually working, okay? So we see that this is the cocktail shaker um, algorithm at work. If I'm gonna increase this to 100, it should be even better to observe. So we are going to the right, and now we're going back to the left, all the way over here, now we're increasing um, this, um, not increasing, we we're floating upwards, and now we're floating downwards, so cocktail shaker is really working. I'm just gonna close this. This is now 
very easy to do. Um, unlike matplotlib, it's not popping back up again. And yeah, so we implemented cocktail shaker sort, and now it's time for us to add the highlights and to also uh, make sure that once the array has been um, sorted, the code does not result in an error, but you know, just displays the sorted array and potentially changes its color, for example, to green. So to <clears throat> make use of different colors, we'll have to define a bunch of colors. And I'll be doing this up here where we have these global variables. And yeah, you just saw that I copy pasted something. I'm very sorry for that. Um, but I was just too lazy to just type out all of these different numbers while I'm, I'm speaking. So I just copy pasted them from my other script. Um, so what's happening here? Um, I defined a dictionary, which I called colors. And in this dictionary, I have a, a name for each entry. So the first name is background. This is now the background color. Then I have another color called regular. This will be the regular color of the bars. And then I defined three highlight colors. This will be the bars that we are highlighting while we are trying to visualize the sorting as it takes place. And then we'll have a final color, which will be the color of the bars once they are sorted. Now, how are the colors defined? Um, I could have just used things like black, orange, red, or green here, but it's, I think it's better to define your own colors because it just gives you a bit more flexibility and allows for color palettes that are a bit nicer to look at because they don't look like a 1980s video game and instead they're just more pleasing to the eye. So each of these um, colors is defined by a tuple of three values and these values specify the red, green and blue levels of the color that you're actually actually looking at. So the background color has comparatively small numbers, 35, 35 and 40. This means that all of the colors are pretty dark and this will then make for a rather dark background. Um, in contrast to that, regular, the regular color of the bars will be almost white. I use these three values here. You, you can just use 255 for each of these. The, the 255 is the highest value that the red, green or blue level can take and this will then be blazing white and this is just a little bit gray involved here as well. I think this just looks a little better than just this super bright white. And anyway, the other colors are defined in a similar fashion where I'm just specifying three values, H. Okay, so let's scroll down here to our two functions that we're using for our drawing. Now, the first thing we'll have to do is we'll actually have to introduce the new colors. So here we'll have a color highlight one. This will be equal to nothing. Well, we are not introducing the colors, we are specifying which bars are to be highlighted in whatever color it is, okay? So here we are specifying all the bars in this empty list. So this will be the default for highlight one, but per default, we are not highlighting anything in highlight one color. Um, but of course, later on, we'll then paste other lists of indexes, indices into this highlight one um, parameter here because we want bars to be highlighted in highlight one color, okay? So now we'll have highlight two. This should be two. I think I misspelled this somewhere. Highlight, this should be two. And yeah, for some reason this happened. I don't know why. Highlight two. Okay, um, just gonna close the search here. Go back up here. This is an empty list and Highlight three is an empty list. Okay, now we'll change this fill here. We don't want this to be black, but the background color that we specified up here in the colors dictionary. So we can just type colors and then we can use background. And what's cool about this is that we'll never ever have to look deep into the code. We can just work with this dictionary up here and then change the color scheme if we don't like it and we can use a different template here. And then we don't have to bother with, okay, where in the code was it that I set the background color? No, we can just set this right here. Now, if you remember, one of the problems that we just encountered was that after the array was sorted, the generator was returning none and then our code resulted in an error because we cannot draw none. So we'll introduce another um, statement, another parameter up here, which will be a Boolean indicating whether or not the array is already sorted. And I'm gonna set this to false. And now down here, we'll now specify two cases, either the array is already sorted 
or we are still in the sorting process. So let's go down here. First, we'll have the arrays already sorted. This is pass, and then else, we'll be drawing this. Okay, so if the array is not sorted, we'll just leave everything as it was before. But if the array is already sorted, well, then we'll have to do things a little bit different. So we'll copy paste what we had down here. Um, but now we're just going to turn or change this to colors sorted. So we are accessing the potentially green color that, it, that we are using to like stress the fact that the array is now sorted in perfectly ascending order. And then later on down here, where we are calling this function, we'll also have um, an if else statement where we will be indicating whether or not this is um, true or false. And in case this is true, I mean, we could do this up here, I think, but I th I'm going to do it later on. It doesn't really matter. I guess we'll then only use a perfectly sorted array in that case. So the sorted will really just tell the computer, yes, the array is sorted, use the green color. It's not saying um, don't use this array anymore. This is just saying use the sorted color. Okay. So if the array is not sorted yet, well, then we'll be using not the sorted color, but we'll be using the regular color. So this will be regular. And once we've done that, once we've drawn all the bars, we're now adding the highlights on top of these bars. So we'll type for I in highlight one. I'm just going to copy paste this, use a different color here, highlight one. And now we can just take this chunk of code here, copy paste it another two times, highlight two, highlight three, highlight two, highlight three. Okay, so we've now updated this function. And if we now go down here, where we visualize the array using a bar chart, you know what, I'm just going to call it bar chart visualization. You see, I'm always changing my comments. <laughs> and down here, we'll now also have our if else statement. The first instance will be if um, array is not none. That's the, um, the normal case. And else, this is then when the array is already sorted. Here we can redefine our array. And here we'll set this to a list version of a range object that goes from one to n plus one. So it's just one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Because the array is technically currently none because the generator is not returning anything. And now we are just redefining it to be the sorted array. And then we can draw it. So now we can just type draw bars and then we can just use this um, method from up here. So now I'm just going to copy these two things. Um, where do we need to go? Array and screen and then we'll set sorted is equal to true. And here we are now using the highlights, highlight two and highlight three. And we don't have to use the sorted as false up here because we specified this as a default value up here. And similarly, we don't have to worry about the highlights because they also have a default default value of being an empty list. Okay, so let's see whether this works. I'm running the script and we can now see our sorting algorithm at work. Unfortunately, it's running very slow, but we can see that this highlight has now appeared and down here we have a yellow highlight. Now it's going back up and the next bar in the right hand side sorted section is blue and now here in the left hand side we have a second yellow bar third blue and so on so this is working let's just see what happens once the array is sorted so i'm just going to speed up the animation here by reducing the wait time and now let's just have a look at how this plays out cocktail sort at work it's running super smoothly and voila it's all green everything's sorted we do not have an error message at this point so this is exactly what we want. Let's close this window. We have just implemented the next step in our visualization. But before we move on to the next video, the next major change to the um, Pygame animate function here, let's just quickly check whether um, the other algorithms work as well. So I'm going to go up here where it says cocktail sort and I'm going to change this. So I'm going to make this um, 
another algorithm just to see whether our function here works with other algorithms as well. So this was the algorithm we did before cocktail sort. And I just misspelled this. And there we go. This appears to be working. Nice. So this works. Um, let's go with brick sort. Um, so with import from brick, we're importing brick sort. Copy paste this down here. And this seems to be working as well. We have this up and down pattern in the middle, which was really the hallmark for brick sort, odd even sort. Now the array is getting sorted. Everything is green. Everything is working just as, as it's supposed to. Let's try bubble sort. Bubble sort. Copy paste this. Watch the bubbles flow to the right hand side. No bubbles are going the other way as they would have done with cocktail sort. So this is working as well. And then we'll have exchange sort. Let's run this as well. Yep, this is working too. We see how these bars are shrinking until every bar is in the correct position. And then lastly, we have um, BOGO sort. So let's just see whether that works too. Of course, here we could we could basically watch this forever, right? I mean, it's just like what we had before when we were just creating new arrays by reshuffling everything. Here we're just swapping two array elements at a time, but it's running super fast. Of course, what are we having? Um, we have 50 array elements. This would take forever. Um, I think this is a good point to stop this uh, video here. In the next video, we'll then make this animation just a little bit easier for us to use in the future. So we'll add some key controls, not only for closing the window, but for also increasing and decreasing the animation speed, things like that. Um, so there's a, like one last video on the Pygame animation coming. See you in this next video. Bye.